Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 32 of the chapter Thermodynamics. Let us now solve some NCRT textbook exercise questions. The first question that I have here is question 6.16 that is the 16th question of the 6th chapter. The question reads that for an isolated system delta u is 0, what will be delta s? What is an isolated system? An isolated system is one in which there is no exchange of energy and there is no exchange of matter. When there is no exchange of energy, it means Q is equal to zero or delta H is equal to zero. That is, there is no enthalpy change in this case. So when they tell you the delta, it's an isolated system, it means that there is delta H should be equal to zero for such a system. And delta U is already given to us as zero, right? So what will be delta H? We know that no enthalpy is changing, that is no exchange of energy is taking place in this process. Yet the process is taking place. That's why it ha we've been told that change in internal energy, that is delta U is also equal to zero. And what does the first law of thermodynamics tell us? It tells us that delta U is equal to Q plus W. That is, that is, it is the sum of the heat exchange and the work done. Now, since delta U is zero, the heat exchange, that is delta H is zero, and work done would also be equal to zero, yet in the system, the process is taking place. So if it is taking place, it means it's a spontaneous process. And for a spontaneous process, we know that delta G is negative. And what is delta G? Delta G for a spontaneous process, for a spontaneous process, process, is negative right and delta g is equal to delta h minus t delta s that's the formula and delta g is negative which means it is less than zero therefore delta h minus t delta s should also be less than zero now if we treat this to be an equation that is delta g which is delta h minus t delta s delta g is less than zero therefore delta h minus t delta s should also be less than zero we know already the delta h is zero that is there is no exchange of heat taking place because the system is isolated so if delta h is zero for delta g to be negative minus t delta s should be a negative value Right? So for delta G, for delta G to be negative, minus T delta S should be less than zero because delta H is already zero. Zero minus T delta S should be less than zero. So we'd say zero means nothing. Minus T delta S should be less than zero. Now, whenever we talk of temperature, for thermodynamics or for usually our study when we are talking of temperature we are talking of the Kelvin scale and the Kelvin scale has the minimum temperature which is zero absolute zero and that temperature is not achievable so whatever be the value of T it will always be a positive value why are we focusing on the positive or the negative here we want T delta S minus T delta S to be a negative value and that will be negative only if both T and delta S are positive or if both of them are negative. The negative of T delta S should be negative. So mathematically that is only possible if either both of them are negative or both of them are positive. T being absolute temperature is always positive. K, temperature in Kelvin scale is always positive. So if it is positive, how can you have a negative value of this? If delta S is also positive, right? If delta S is positive, only then this, the, if you find the product of T and delta S, T delta S would be a negative value or minus T delta S would be a negative value only if delta S is also positive. So T is positive. So delta S should also be should also be positive so that minus T delta S is a negative value. 
because it's only when minus t delta s is a negative value that delta g on the whole would be less than zero that is it will be negative and the process would be spontaneous so delta s is a and we are assuming the process to be spontaneous because we've been told that the system is isolated and the internal energy change is zero it means a change is occurring although the internal energy did not change in that case and since it is an isolated system the value of delta h is also zero and delta s is to be calculated so this was question 16 let us now move on to question 17 for the reaction at 298 kelvin let me remind you 298 kelvin is the temperature under standard conditions so for a reaction at 298 Kelvin, 2A plus B gives you C. It's a hypothetical equation. 2A plus B gives you C and the enthalpy of this reaction is positive 400 kilojoules per mole. And delta S is given to us which is 0.2 kilojoules per Kelvin per mole. At what temperature will the reaction become spontaneous? you are considering delta H and delta S to be constant for a wide range of conditions. Now, the question is, when is the reaction going to be spontaneous? At what temperature would the, tempera uh, would the reaction become spontaneous? So what all have we been given? We are given delta H. Delta H is equal to 400 kilojoules. Let, we could convert it into joules to make our calculations, not to remove the decimal here. 400,000 joules per mole is delta H and delta S is given to us is 0.2. So if you convert this also to joules, 0.2 would become 200, right? So 200 joules per Kelvin per mole, although it really makes no difference when we find out the ratio, but this is just for the sake of making it easier and removing the decimal for calculations. For a, a for a reaction that is spontaneous, we have to calculate delta G. Delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S. T is also given to us, which is 298 Kelvin, right? Now we know that this entire reaction has been given to us at 298 Kelvin. But we can ask that temperature at which this reaction becomes spontaneous. The value of delta G could be calculated at this temperature and you will get the value. But the question is, would that value be negative? And we want that value to be negative. So let's just keep the T as a doubt. Let us just see at what temperature would delta G be negative. So let us say that delta G, in order to have a spontaneous process, delta G should be negative. That is delta H minus T delta S should be less than zero. So let us take this part of it. So delta H minus T delta S should be less than zero. At what temperature would it be less than zero? Let us substitute the values of delta H and delta S in this now. Delta H is 400,000 joules per mole minus T and delta S is 200 joules per Kelvin per mole is less than zero. Now, if we take this to remove the negative sign, let us take this to that side. We have 400,000 joules per mole would be less than T into 200 joules per Kelvin per mole. Since we intend to find out T, we can flip this equation and the less than becomes greater than. So we'll say T into 200 joules per kelvin per mole is actually greater than 400,000 joules per mole, right? Now, if we want to find out T, therefore T would be greater than 400,000 joules per mole upon 200 joules per Kelvin per mole which cancels out the joule cancels out the per mole and Kelvin will come up because Kelvin inverse is in the denominator which means and if you solve this 0 0 4000 divided by 2 
T should be greater than 2000 K inverse in the denominator becomes K in the numerator should be greater than 2000 Kelvin. It means this is the temperature above which the reaction would be spontaneous. I'll do one more numerical, one more problem, the next problem here in this video and then we'll move on to the next video and solve a few more numerical problems before we proceed to the next chapter that is equilibrium. Give me a moment. Now question 18 of your NCRT textbook exercise is not actually a numerical problem, it's a conceptual problem. Look at it. It says that for the reaction 2Cl gas giving you Cl2 gas, what are the signs of delta H and delta S? Now we see that there are two atoms of chlorine here and a molecule of chlorine is being formed. Even if we take it as the atomic or the molecular equation, while we know in thermodynamics we always talk of a molar equation. So we have two moles of atoms of chlorine which result in the formation of one mole of chlorine molecules. In other words, two atoms are joining together. And we know what is that called? Bond formation. And we've studied about bond formation enthalpy and bond dissociation enthalpy. You remember, whenever bonds are formed, it leads to stability and it leads to release of energy. So bond formation is an exothermic process. So if it is an exothermic process, the sign for delta H should be negative. So delta H is enthalpy for this reaction is enthalpy of bond formation. So which is negative. So delta H B for bond formation is negative. And what about delta S? In order to find out what happens to the entropy, we have to see is the disorder increasing or decreasing? When does disorder increase or decrease? When the state of a substance changes, for example, from a solid state, it goes to a gaseous state, randomness, the molecules move faster in the gaseous state. Therefore, a gaseous state would have more entropy. But what do we have here? In both the reactants and the products, we've got gases. So what is going to uh, decide which is more random? Whenever you have, let us say, um, as I told you, we, I usually take the example of children in the playground. There is one classroom that goes into the playground and is making noise. And whatever noise that one playground, uh, one classroom is making in the, uh, students full of uh, one class are making in the playground. If another class, another section of the same class, those students also go and join. Now, let us say both of them had 35 students each. Now you have 70 students. If you have 70 students, will the noise factor be double or the chaos be more with two classes or would it be less? The larger the number of similar particles, the more will be the chaos. So we have gaseous particles on both sides. But on the reactive side, you have two moles. And on the product side, you have only one mole which means the number of particles is decreasing even if the physical state is the same. So how much noise can one mole make? Two moles can obviously make more noise, they can create more disturbance, there can be more randomness when there are more gaseous particles. And since both are gaseous, they are moving, let us assume, with the same speeds. So what is happening to entropy? We have two moles for delta S, two moles are coming down to one mole that is the number of moles is decreasing and since it is decreasing delta s is also decreasing or delta s should have a negative value so these were just three questions based on thermodynamics of your ncrt textbook exercise in the next video i'll solve a few more problems before moving on to uh, the next chapter that is chemical equilibrium so if you found the video helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye bye for now.